Since the morning of September 11th, 2001, the United States has focused on an overriding national objective, anticipating and preventing the next terrorist attack. Hundreds of billions of dollars have been spent to secure a vast country defined by the freedom that makes possible the world's most prosperous marketplace. But for all its size and complexity, the economy of the United States depends on access to a single natural resource, oil. And in an age of global terrorism, America's reliance on oil creates significant national security and economic risks. This was the challenge confronted by a group of former U.S. officials who convened in Washington to participate in a simulated working group of the White House Cabinet. Their task? To advise an American president as the nation grapples with an oil crisis. Oil Shockwave, an oil crisis executive simulation. As many of you know, this unrest in Nigeria could have a significant impact on the supply and price of oil. The Cabinet Working Group's first challenge is to address a sudden reduction in the world's supply of oil, the result of civil unrest in Nigeria, the fifth largest supplier of oil to the United States, coupled with increased global demand. The President has asked uh, for our recommendations on three, on three issues. The first is further discussions with OPEC countries, particularly Saudi Arabia, about increasing production. I just had a conversation with the uh, member of the Saudi royal family. The good news is the Saudis say they have the capacity to increase their production to roughly 12 million barrels a day and that they are prepared to do it. However, like uh, everything in life, it wouldn't come free. Essentially back off pressuring them on democratic reform and elections and stop investigating uh, allegations that they're involved in money laundering and giving funds to al-Qaeda. The next Saudi demands are going to be much more extreme than this. Are the Saudis the only place uh, in the world at this point that has uh, that have spare capacity? I think as we sit here in December 2005 looking at something that would be available in time to address the situation we're facing, uh, that's, that's correct, unfortunately. The cabinet unilaterally rejects Saudi Arabia's demands. Without a Saudi commitment to increase production, the group is forced to consider utilizing the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, or SPRO. We have about 700 million barrels of oil in the SPRO today. From a presidential decision to draw it down today, we could be drawing down in two weeks. Uh, we could draw down up to 4.1 million barrels of oil per day. We could sustain that for about 90 days. If we were to do a major release right now, on the very day we're doing the release, we could have more bad news in Nigeria that could overwhelm the price uh, decline we would get. We live in a very dangerous world. If we start indiscriminately taking fuel out of the, out of the spro, then we may have a very serious problem in, in the ability to support our military operations. Things could get a lot worse than this for the reasons BX said and others. Uh, we shouldn't move quickly to, uh, to uh, tap this spro. The cabinet decides against using the strategic petroleum reserve. It is becoming clear that in a world where oil is a global commodity and there is a delicate balance between supply and demand, Taking even a small amount of oil off the market could cause prices to rise dramatically. There is no distinction between foreign and domestic oil. There's just oil. And right now it's $80 a barrel. Let me move to the last uh, uh, three questions he asked us, and that was about the possibility of, of uh, military action in Nigeria. <laughs> you're not recommending that we send U.S. For ground forces no, in not, to not protect those we, wells. We, we can help them in intelligence collection means, we can help them in surveillance. You'd have to not think to be successful of a purely military intervention. You'd have to think of a much broader approach. First of all, we can't do it. We don't have the forces to do it. I don't think there's a foreign policy or national security solution to our energy predicament. Uh, it distorts our foreign policy, it distorts our national security, but at the end of the day, it's going to be the conversation you just asked for about really energy policy that is going to have to, to be the focus. Uh, if we succeed there, it will to some extent liberate our foreign policy and our national security uh, from many of the challenges I believe we now face. And if we don't succeed in, in coming up with a better energy policy, uh, we will continue to be twisted around this reality that, as you said before, relatively small developments over there have uh, enormous developments here uh, economically. 
The cabinet recognizes that there are no short-term economic, military, or diplomatic options available to stop the deepening economic and national security crisis. Five weeks after instability in Nigeria shocked the world oil market, the cabinet is reconvened to address further disruption of the world's oil supply 